Let's get going. Um, so as uh, Jerry talked about, I got the CBRS Pi I've been working on. Um, pretty cool little project I've been working on here. CBRS tends to hide stuff. They don't want a, us to see a lot of it. So in one of the Aruba white papers, they said they're shielding us network engineers from excessive complexity. As network engineers, we tend to want to see what's going on under the curtains. So I'm freaking Peter McKenzie. I want to know how it works. Um, so I built the CBRS Pi. Um, I got a couple different models of it. I took, originally I uh, had a CM4 with the IO board that I could do a six gigahertz packet capture as well as CBRS. Um, then, I, then I got the Pi Pro and added this to it. Um, this allows me to packet capture on the CBRS. And then I built my own version, um, this model right here. It can pack and capture six gigahertz as well as CBRS at the same time. It gives you a lot of really cool information that vendors are not giving us access to in the air without spending a lot of money on tools. So pretty cool little project I've been working on. Um, but with, with that, um, Fernay dragged me to Prague and then to Mexico City. And while I was in Prague, I was, Peter came up to me afterwards and he was like, so I've never studied this protocol. How does it work? What's the modulation? Aren't all the frames encrypted? So, let's, so that's what I, my premise of this talk. Let's dig into CBRS. So the modulation scheme uses OFDMA. It actually works in cellular, unlike questionable in Wi-Fi, but it actually works in cellular. It was built for that. They actually use different, different forms of OFDMA for the downlink versus uplink. Uplink, they use single carrier OFDMA. Um, it's, it's a modified version that saves battery as well as um, is less processor intensive for your clients. Um, CBRS, well, LT in general has 15 kilohertz subcarriers spacing. They have different channels, but usually typically you're seeing 10 to 20 megahertz channels. 5G is actually adding up to 100 megahertz carrier aggregation channels. Carrier aggregations is when you bond more than 20 megahertz channels together, and they can be non-contiguous. Um, also, the you, supports QPSK, 16 QAM, 64 QAM, and 5G brings 256 QAM, as well as lower, I found this interesting, but the lower BPSK um, for your modulation scheme. With CBRS, as I, as I mentioned, um, it's structured and scheduled. So you have this frame structure. If you've ever worked in some other networks, you've probably heard of the TDD configuration, time division duplexing. Other forms of cellular use frequency division duplexing. CBRS is time division duplexing, so it spaces it out over time. Each one of these little blocks, or frames as they call them, is assigned a different, different form either downlink, the radio's talking, or clients are allowed to talk. Um, in CBRS, we're allowed to do one or two, SA subframe assignment one or two. Um, typically outdoors, this is just from what my testing, Verizon, the, the DY, Paul and those guys, they're doing SA2 outdoors. So do SA2 if you're doing outdoor deployments because otherwise you will be interfering with anybody around you and you will actually make each other's networks operate worse. Um, so with the Pi, I'm capturing this stuff right here. I'm capturing BCCH channel, CCCH channel, DCCH channel, all of these, for, these are control channels, not necessarily frames, they're the control channels where you get your beacons, you get your data, it comes through the DTCH channel. This device is actually not capturing that, it's encrypted anyway, so you can't see it, so it just doesn't capture it, it's just wasted space. But you're capturing your BCCH channels, your CCH channels, all these different things. This is the downlink version, this is the uplink version. A um, lot less on the uplink from the client sending to the, to the radio, but very cool stuff. Digging in really briefly, um, so as I mentioned, the BCH channel, that's where a lot of your really cool, cool information comes from this device. You get what are called MIBs and SIBs, master information blocks and system information blocks. The MIB, is ju there's just one type called the MIB, um, but SIBs, there's lots of different types. There's like, there's 
almost, I think with 5G, where you're starting to get into 30 plus different types of SIBs. Those contain your PL, PLMN, which is the identifier for the network. CBRS, it's 315010, typically, unless you get your own PLMN. Um, you get your frame, subframe assignment, as I just mentioned, so you can know I'm interfering with this network next to me. Really cool function of this tool that you do not know about otherwise. It's not available in your Android apps or things like that. Um, subframe patterns is kind of like a guard interval. It allows you to um, accept how, what, how big your cell is, so you can do smaller cells or different things. And then the tie, the tie, the tack, CBRS, other things. As I mentioned, the DTCH is where all the data traffic is. Um, this is a packet capture that I've captured with my device showing the different types. There's the UCC upload CCCHs, download up CCCHs, the BCCHs there with all the information. Um, really cool. Lastly, I, I actually might finish here a little early. Um, so with, with cellular, you get a, because of how it's structured, you can, you can say, you can, you can plan ahead and go, this frame is going to look like this every time because of the scheduling the fret and the structure. So I found this, this cool little tool, this daggle.in slash LTE. On that tool, you can go in and set the different configurations and it will, put, it will show you what the airtime will look like physically. So the device that will be down talking, so the radio, Every time it talks, that's all on the bottom left. That's the white, all those little white spaces, that's all the radio talking to the clients. The green are all the clients talking up to the radio. This is the subframe assignment two um, configuration. All those other little dots on there are the control traffic and other, other things. It's very, very efficient on the, with how it uses a spectrum. That graph there, um, the gray there, that's the downlink traffic. So with, the, with this specific configuration, 10 megahertz channels, TDD, SSA, SA2, SSP7, you get 62.7% of the traffic is downlink with every 10, millis, 10 millisecond set of frames. That's how much traffic you're getting. 22.9% is uplink with that configuration with the SA2. So SA2, I kind of skipped over this briefly. I got a minute. Um, it basically is a, SA2 is a 60-40 split. So 40% or 60% of the traffic is downlink, 40% is uplink. SA1 is a 50-50 in how it all works with multiple clients. You don't get true equal downlink uplink with, with cellular but that's how it all works out. So it's very, very efficient protocol, uh, very, very great for if you need to schedule traffic, if, you're, if you have a specific use case that needs um, certain SLAs, you can guarantee those SLAs. You can, it's not something that I say, let's well, so implement it everywhere, it's not replace Wi-Fi. That's not what this is going to do. It's gonna be another tool that complements what we're doing as another lane on the highway so we can provide quality service to certain applications that need it while we leave Wi-Fi for, for our, other, our other traffic. So just wanted to finish up with a couple resources. I have people ask me all the time, how do you learn all this stuff? I just went through and read a lot. Aruba's got a lot of great blogs, uh, blog posts and some white papers. The CWNP C5S course, really great course, as well as you need to get your CPI. So, and that's what I got. Thanks, everybody.